Audrey, thank you so much for joining me on the Become a Media Maven podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm excited to chat with you because wholesome culture is super cute. I am a sucker for t-shirts with words on them. As you can see, I love what you do for people who don't know, tell people listening what wholesome culture is. Sure. Um, basically wholesome culture is a apparel and lifestyle company. So we have a lot of accessories as well. Um, clothing t-shirt and we do everything around sustainability and, um, just living a lifestyle good for the planet or self and the animals. And how did you start this business? Like, what was the idea? Yeah. Um, so I was vegan back then and that was like four years ago. And um, I was looking at creating um, vegan supplement protein powder because a lot of my friends, they were struggling with kind of starting how to go vegan, how to kind of start this healthy lifestyle, how to be better for the planet. Um, and so I was going to make vegan supplement protein powder and I didn't have the money because I needed $20,000 for the first batch. Um, and one of my friends that I was working with back then, um, GN was like, okay, well, why don't you do apparel? And I was like, well, I don't really want to do apparel. And I kind of pushed it on the waiting, waiting. And at one point I was like, okay, I'm going to try. And funny enough, um, that really picked up quickly. And my background was in paid advertising and marketing. So I kind of took this over and I was like, okay, this is working really well. And people were excited. And I was able to kind of mix the mission I had with the apparel, because in my mind at the beginning, I was like, I don't see how I can transmit this vision that I have in this mission through apparel. And then as I was doing that, I realized that it was possible to just really create a lifestyle company around that. And what did you know about creating apparel? Like, did you, I mean, how do you just start creating unique t-shirts and selling them? Like, what was your background to that point? How did you learn how to do this? Um, yeah, so my background, when I was young, I wanted to have a fashion company for some reason. And then I lost that on the way, but I was always really um, into Photoshop and designing and kind of was really had a lot of interest towards that. Um, and from there also, then my background, I studied in marketing. So I also knew kind of those two little things that goes together. And from there, um, when my friend told me about starting clothing, um, back then there was a lot of, um, print on demand company, um, and he was working in the field. So we started working with his printing company. So I got very lucky because he already had like this really good setup for that. Um, and I was the one doing the design. So I was going on Photoshop. I was like brainstorming, doing design, putting that on a t-shirt. And from there, um, we would do like pre-sale based on what people were interested in and just started to build this like little community that was more vegan oriented and plant-based and going toward that lifestyle. And in four years, you have gone from zero to eight figures. Yes, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. And I know it's a loaded question yeah. to just ask. In three you, years, did, actually, but it's in been three four years. years now. Okay. Yeah, ex excuse me. Years. Not four years. So even <laughs> even bigger. Um, I don't I know it's a loaded question to say, how did you do it? Uh, but let's talk about because there's so much. I mean, and I hate it when people I do know. that. They think, oh, let's let me pick your brain for 30 minutes how did you do this as if it's something worth a 30 minute conversation like there's a whole lot to unpack there um so tell me what one thing you did that maybe you went into it and you were like either a i don't know how the hell to do this or b this is never gonna work and you were surprised that it did work in your favor anything like that pop up for from the last three years um Yes. So I think even the clothing at the beginning, we were doing also like mugs and like little accessories and that wasn't picking up at all. And I kept pushing away the clothing. Actually, I was like, I, I don't see this working. I was like, everyone is doing it. And I think that's actually, that's a really big point. When we don't have a business and we're looking around and we have this mindset where it's like, but everyone's already doing this. Like, oh, if I'm going to do t-shirt, everyone's already doing it. Or if I'm going to write a book, everyone's already writing a book or coaches like, oh, but everyone's already a coach. And if we keep staying in that mindset, then that stops us from like moving forward. So I think that's important to just 
move this away and it's okay there's so much space in the market for anything even if there's already something similar and from there you create your unique offering so I think for me that was really the step where I was like this might work instead of being like this is not going to work and doing it in a mindset where this already everyone was doing it um, and from there, when I started testing, like it wasn't working, it took a while, maybe it didn't took a while. It took maybe like five weeks, <laughs> <laughs> but it we are impatient. Really... <laughs> so five weeks can yeah, seem like a while. <laughs> exactly. I was, I was testing a lot of designs and I was making ads for it. I was spending a little bit of money trying to figure out what people were interested in. And at one point I remember, I think it was this, um, design that's called be one less person hurting animals. And that was like our first design that really picked up that people were like, I love this. And um, from there, people just started buying that a lot. And then we were doing a lot of um, ads back then uh, and it was a bit less expensive than it is today. Um, so from there, we kind of scaled that product fairly quickly and build up on more product. And I was doing more and more products. So that's kind of what happened. And when you were doing those ads, was it Facebook targeting and you're targeting like people who are interested in a vegan lifestyle, things like that? Like who are you, who do you even target with something like that online? Yeah, we were targeting animal rights and vegan people. Uh, yeah, just really kind of just that market where that resonated with me and my mission um, and the mission of the business. Um, and I was going to say, yes, Facebook ads, that's what we were doing. But the element that was a bit different back then is not a lot of people were focusing on Instagram and people would push ads for Instagram, but they would not really optimize them for it. So I would see a lot of people using maybe like general ads, the same that they use for Facebook or the same they use for their campaigns like that they put on the street. And it's like, that's not really what works on Instagram. Like we're looking for more native stuff, more um, things that just feels more authentic. And that's kind of what people are moving to, towards over. Um, and so from there, for me, I really took this approach of figuring out how to make those products and those ads work on Instagram specifically when everyone was busy with Facebook. And it is the same. Uh, it goes into power editor, business manager, right? All the same platform. But yeah, there was an element where we were only thinking of trying to figure it out for that specific channel that not a lot of people had figured out. So, yeah. And I'm assuming from the very beginning till now, you have slowly built a team bigger and bigger. And that's a scary, I mean, that was probably the thing that I held off on the longest and the scariest part because you're trusting your brand, your vision, your name, everything mm -hmm. to somebody else. So what's that mm -hmm. process like for you? And obviously this is something that is important for you to grow. You can only grow so much by yourself. You need other people. Yeah, um, that's so true. It is such a hard part. I mean, as an entrepreneur, especially at the beginning, and I see so many people, my friends or people I meet, they have their business of one show person and they, they have so many clients. They're like, they're so busy. And I'm like, you need to hire someone. You really need to hire someone. <laughs> like just do this little step. Cause it's at the beginning, I feel like that's when it's the hardest to like invest in yourself, but you have to just be like, all right, I, I am worried. it. I know this is going to work um and really make a step for that and for me at the beginning um I still kept my full-time job until very long <laughs> so until like December to let's say July I was working full-time in the marketing agency so quickly then in February I couldn't handle the customer service so I started hiring customer service and then I hired a marketing intern um while I was working full-time <laughs> So I was like, it's okay. I'm not paying myself. I'm going to pay them. And then that way this can run and I can keep my job. And at this point I wasn't really confident in myself. So I was like, I don't think this is going to work, but I guess it's working right now. So I'm going to keep going. Um, so that's kind of what happened. And that was this little crunch of hiring those two little hires that were not too expensive. And I was able to kind of crunch it and make more space. And then that's when I feel like doors open and you're like, Oh, okay. We can scale that even further in the hiring, um, more people as you go. I feel the same way. I kept my full-time job for months while I was working and building my team. And I, I suggest other people do the same because if you just go into your business a hundred percent, it causes a lot of stress, especially if yeah. you 
need money. I mean, unless, you know, you, you have a spouse who's doing it all, or you are financially independent, like you have to make money and it's very stressful when you're not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I a hundred percent agree. When, what was the moment? So you're, you're slowly growing, you're working full time, you have wholesome culture. What was the moment, what was happening? And what was it like for you when you started seeing like, oh, this is actually working. Like I'm headed towards <laughs> six figures and then multiple six figures and then seven and then eight. Like, did it happen? I don't want to say slowly because it happened in three years. So that's not slow, but I mean, was it like a slow buildup in those three years or was it like something happened and it was just like all of a sudden, bam. So I know I, I don't want to be discouraging. It did happen really quickly. <laughs> so it was, it was really quick. Um, that's not I discouraging. Think, That's the opposite. Yeah, of I guess it, is. it can be <laughs> discouraging for some people, but um, for me, it happened really quickly. But I think that was because, again, my background in advertising, where I was able to scale things really quickly. And so by it went so fast by I think when I quit my job in July, um, we were doing six figures a month by then. Oh, a so month. That was, okay. I'm, Excuse me. Yeah. Six figures a month. So and course. most of these sales, most of the sales were coming in via social media advertising. Yeah, mostly. And then the repeat customer purchase and all of that. Right. So by then we, yeah, we grew really quickly. Um, the company and people were really excited. It was like this really good moment for bringing this in because there was a lot of brand there was some brand that was sustainable, but not that many. And then they didn't have the story factor and they didn't have the lifestyle factor. So it would just be like, yeah, this is sustainable, but they're, they were not creating necessarily a lifestyle around it. So I think that was also the part where we were doing a little extra. And there was like some vegan t-shirt brand, but they were more um, just towards vegan. And our mission was towards everyone. Like we want everyone to um, be able to, like reduce their consumption in meat, educate them how to do that and help them and like, you know, love, love people that are, aren't there yet and really providing education for them. Um, so I think, yeah, that was a big difference for us. Um, I think, does that answer your question? It does. Yes. A question about the, the revenue versus profit, you have to spend money to make money. And a lot of business owners in the beginning are afraid of that. So I just mm -hmm. want to make it clear and you can elaborate. Yes, you were bringing in six figures a month, but you yeah. were also spending money. It wasn't like you get these. And, and I feel like there's so many people in online business. They listen to podcasts. They think, oh, six mm -hmm. figures a month. Like Audrey's mm -hmm. taking all that cash and putting it in the bank. No. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah, no, it does not work like that. It is frustrating sometimes, even in the sustainability place where it's like, people are like, I don't understand why this underwear is $15. And I'm like, we have to pay people like you're buying sustainable fabric. You're not buying from China. Like everyone needs to be paid the advertising. So yes, like you're saying, um, I was not making any profit um, until very long. Like I was reinvesting everything into um, advertising. So I had this model where I would calculate my things and make sure that we're breaking even, but also I would reinvest as much as I can. So I wasn't taking salary for a very long time, actually. And you did your ads your social media ads yourself I was doing it myself back then um and at one point I hired an assistant that I slowly trained because that was a lot of work to be doing my own ads and uh, kind of grew that person to more like being the manager um I would I would strongly advise anyone that started their company to understand that part of their business even if they're not doing it themselves that's okay but they really have to be somehow tech savvy because otherwise it's hard to scale a business when you don't know how that part works and that's kind of the engine right engine engine right now for most businesses I think so it's so important to understand it deeply and there's a lot of people who do that for a living and I don't believe understand how it really works people think mm -hmm. they know just because you know how to get in there and you know how to click the buttons that you know how yeah. it works I I personally I've hired, I think three social media companies in the past, and I have been disappointed with, with all of them. And I don't know a lot about social media advertising, but I do know that one company put the wrong pixel on the ad. I have, oh, I have media my maven, my PR agency, and I have <laughs> podcast clout, my software. 
and the the ad for podcast clout had the pixel for media maven like i know that and and i'm paying you thousands a month and you couldn't get that right like it's just you just gotta look out for who you're hiring so i agree you do need to know Mm -hmm. how to do some of this stuff yourself yeah, you need to definitely. Know the basic. You need to know what to check and how their reporting works because they're they're not going to push for you. And that's different for each businesses. Like I have friends that have coaching businesses and they don't really need to do advertising that much because it's a different model. But for e-commerce, especially, I would say it's so important that you understand what they're um, and I think if for any department, it's important that you understand what metrics they're reporting to you because if you're giving all the power away and you're not pushing or not like like aligning the vision then it's really hard for them to even push for you because it's not their business and so what is a daily what does a day look like for you um I mean now we have a bigger team (laughs) um actually it went down because of COVID so back then um we I was also managing our fulfillment center and screen printing shops so after a year um, I moved to New York and I went to manage um, the screen printing part of thing and the fulfillment. So on top of managing your e-commerce, now I had a screen print shop to manage. Um, so that became quite a bit. And um, as we grew at one point, uh, we outgrew the screen printing in our fulfillment in the house. So this past year we have um, moved over, especially when COVID happened, we had to move over outsourcing or production in the US, like screen printing and all that. Um, So now we don't have that part of the business and we have mainly like our online team, which is about 12 people. And for me, day to day looks like right now, um, really it's, I think it's all about the vision and like really making sure that everyone has in mind what the future goal is and what's coming up and how that's the, the year supposed to look like. And also for me, I'm very, I think marketing savvy. So all those little things and little tweaks that I see, like my team is going to report to me and they're going to be, they're going to be like, okay, well, here's a marketing plan. And I always have like those little adjustment. And I think those little adjustment as a CEO, as a visionary, um, they make a huge difference in like the path you're going because slowly it's like, uh, and it's like, okay, we got to realign straight. So that's really important. And how did you learn all of this stuff? I mean, even like, like the business owner being the visionary, like that's something that, that you learn either by coaching, by books. I mean, how do you, how do you continue to learn and grow and take things to the next level? Hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, yes. I was reading a lot before starting the business about businesses, leadership. Um, but I think what helped me a lot was, either having mentor or coaches uh, around, um, whether those were like more like friends or whether this was actual coaches, just having someone that keeps you accountable and like reminds you how to um, handle management, handle leadership issues, end up like handle um, team problems or all that, all those things. Like for me, it was not, it was not coming uh, naturally. You know, when there's conflict, it's like, okay, as you're supposed to handle that, Um, So really understanding that and having people that have done it before um, to your side, I think helps a lot. Agree. Tell me about the self-care that you do. I'm a big fan of self-care. I do it a lot. I don't feel any kind of guilt about it. I am all about self-care. Um, that. <laughs> <laughs> so many people they're like, they're yeah, like, no, yeah. I don't have time for it. I'm like, you've got to make time for that. <laughs> so talk to me about, about what you do. You know, you're, you're super busy. You're managing a team and things get stressful, especially when you're dealing with customers and clients and team, you can try to avoid drama as much as you can. But when you have all those different personalities, it's, it's tough. <laughs> And I think that's the hardest part of business is dealing mm-hmm. with all of the personalities and perspectives. So what do you, how do you stay um, sane, Audrey? How do you stay sane? Yes, I love that question. Um, I'd love to give a little background because I like to give the two side of the coins. And right now I feel like I gave the, the beautiful side and I'd love to give the not so beautiful. I love uh, because that. Because I think that's so, so important. Um, like for me in those, like, especially the first three years, um, it really broke me. Like seriously, my body was in total fight or flight 
at any time there was I didn't remember what was being calm anymore like I was always like like every day looking at my email and there was a lot of issue like really big problems like when you're not set up for growth and like there's just really thing bad things that could happen you know and it's like okay I need to set that up and I became really stressed and there was a point where um last year um I couldn't sit anymore or walk or anything I was just in chronic pain at all time like if someone was stabbing me and I was just not understanding and to that place where I don't know maybe some people that listen to your podcast or have chronic pain or have headaches or have those little things that comes up and it's like for me I kept pushing in way I was like I don't care I just have a business to to roll like I'm on growth mode super rocket and it just brought me to the point where I wasn't able anymore to even hold the space for my team and even be the container for my team where I was like, just really, um, really sick. Um, so I took a break and I hired someone that was going to run the business for six months. And I went to Bali and I just stopped working and the business was not, it was difficult for the business for me to not be here. And it was not Hold going on. well. Time out. But, yeah, time out. <laughs> time out. How could you mentally... <laughs> Just say here, run the business. I'm checking out and going to Bali for like, I, and I have somebody who is like my right hand Mm -hmm. woman and is amazing. And I could probably do that with her in place, but I would still be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? What's happening in my emails? I mean, how did you totally detach for six months? Yeah, I was going to go for a month. Actually, I wanted to just do a one month break. And I was like, I just need to do a one month break so I can reset my body. I'm not feeling well. I'm crying every day. I'm in panic attack every day. I'm going insane. Um, and so yeah, I was able to hire someone that was going to take care of that. And from there, um, yeah, it was difficult. It was really triggering on all possible level to give control to someone else and be like, maybe this person's going to ruin everything. Like, I don't know. And on the other side of things, like, I was, I was so sick. I was like, I, ca- I can't move. I can't do anything. I'm just like so overwhelmed. So then I took this break and then COVID happened and I was able to kind of take more of that time off because everything slowed down and the world slowed down and just like heal my stress, heal my chronic pain, go inside, go within, unload what was like kind of bubbled up for three years. Um, so yeah, I was still involved, but really not as much. And yeah, how I was able, I mean, I was able, the universe forced me to be able, I wouldn't say that I was comfortable doing it. It was, it was very stressful to even let it go. But once I did it, I was like, okay, this is important right now for me to do that. Um, so yeah, self-care for me became to come back to your question, (laughs) roll back, it became taking care of my emotion, taking care of what's going on inside it, making sure that I'm emptying myself and I'm like feeling everything that needs to be felt in order to show up properly for my team. So that means whether it's through meditation or movement or um, listen right now, a lot of the John Wineland um, pleasure practice, I think it's so important. It's been really helping me moving my emotion through because, you know, as women, we try to um, run a business as men, but we're women and we need to feel things and we try to kind of cover that up And we're like, okay, I'm going to be super rough. And like, I got this and I'm going to do this. And we're good. We can do it. But there's also an element of us that is more like flowy and more like emotion. And, but then we kind of suppress that. I mean, for me, it was that. And just being back to that. And that's what it means for me to do some self-care, like coming back to my essence and coming back to my feminine and feeling everything that needs to be felt. And if that means taking a bath with myself, journaling, uh, meditation, um, dance, just really trying to incorporate that in, um, my routine. I love that. I was just chatting a couple of podcasts ago with my friend who also owns a PR agency. And I was telling her, I said, women deal with emotions so much better than men. Like men want to act like (laughs) women are emotional, but like women are so much better at dealing with emotions Mm. and men, they hide it. And then all of a sudden they freak out and lose their marbles. (laughs) And it's like, an issue and women Mm -hmm. are just so much better at it. So I love that you shared that. Do you have anything again, loaded question? How do you get so successful in three years, but any specific tangible tips 
that you can share with listeners, things that they can implement in their business to experience, you know, even a fraction of the growth you have? Yes. Okay. Let's, let's see. Three advice. I think, hmm. I know it's a loaded question. There's a lot. There is a lot. Um, I did like your tip on, even if other people are doing it, like who cares, do it anyway. (laughs) That was a good one. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Well, actually just that voice in your head, that's like this resistance. Like I think, yes, sitting with it, listening to it and like moving it so that you can, okay, I've listened to you now, but this is not my essence. This, I know I can do this and just moving forward. That would be a great, a great thing to do. Um, the second thing is, um, I mean, I still think as business owner, like taking, taking time to feel, taking time to what's got, what's coming up and making sure that you're able to show up in the way you want to show up, because I think it's hard to, um, try to push a business forward if we, um, if we're not being ourselves and if we're stuck in that, that container and that resistance that we created for ourselves. And on a more practical way, that's maybe more the mental side of things. Um, the things that we're afraid of. So sometimes um, we tend to put aside the things that we don't want to do. Like, for instance, I see some business owner. Oh, but I don't want to deal with Facebook ads. Like, I, I, I don't understand it. And really taking this time to be like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to understand this. I'm going to understand what's going on there so that this can can work because I think there's an element of us sometimes that we tend to what scare scares us we just put it on the side and we don't really face it so really being like okay I have fear around that but also facing it what's that little obstacle right now for your business because we know how to grow our businesses we all know as entrepreneur we've listened to those podcasts we've read those books um so really being true with yourself and like what is the obstacle right now if I was a friend right now and I was listening to or looking at the situation like really what's blocking me from the growth is it hiring people is it the Facebook ads is it the product it like what is it and being true to yourself and like okay I'm gonna do this and taking this step now I'm thinking back on the things that I was afraid to do in my business and then when I look back it took me so long to do them And they were the biggest life-changing things in my business. One was Mm -hmm. investing in a business coach. I was so afraid to Mm -hmm. invest in a business coach because I thought you have to have that money in the bank to spend it. And then I remember this business coach said, well, did you have the money in your, in the bank when you bought your house? Did you have the money in the bank Mm -hmm. when you bought your car? Did you have the money in the bank when you went to college? Like, no, no, and no. So then why do you need the money in the bank to hire a business coach? Like you pay for that Mm -hmm. monthly. And that was, that was totally business changing and same with growing a team. Very, very Mm. business changing all things that both things that I was very afraid to do. I love that. It's so true. And, you know, I'd like to add something that came up when you said that something so important, especially as women, Uh, a good quick exercise for all of us, just like taking a breath in our warm space, in the womb and just kind of emptying emptying all the stress, calming the mind, and then asking ourself, like, what's next? What's needed right now? Like, what's the obstacle and the question and or intuition? So it's so, it's so powerful. It has most of the answer we're looking, we're looking for, if not all. So connecting with that space and that creative space, I think can help a lot. This is turning into a guided meditation now. I love it. Here we, go. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> okay, Audrey at Wholesome Culture. Where can people find out more? Um, yeah, I mean, they can check out our website at wholesomeculture.com or Instagram at Wholesome Culture. And um, they can probably find me out under um, on Instagram as well under Audrey dash my last name. It's a bit hard, Gaston Gay, but if you write Audrey dash CAS, probably you can find me. (laughs) I will make it easy and link to it in the show notes. Where, where are you (laughs) from? What is the name and the accent from? Oh, I'm Canadian. I'm from Quebec. I speak French. Oh, excuse me. Did you not notice my shirt? I just saw, I was going to say something, but you were too quick. I love it. (laughs) My husband is from Nova Scotia. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I've (laughs) never been, I've never been to Quebec, but my husband's from Nova Scotia and all my kids. 
That's why. Yes. I get, I get them gifted from my in-laws, all of my Canadian gear. So is your, are it. you at all of your operations are out of Canada? Uh, no, in the U S. Oh, that's yeah. right. Because you moved. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks Audrey. Yeah. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for all the questions. That was awesome. I love it. Thank you.